The Sims 4 has a large cast of characters, many of which are iconic to The Sims franchise. Some of them have been a part of the franchise since the very beginning, and some became instantly iconic with their introduction to The Sims 4. But this video is not about these Sims. Today I will be discussing some of the most forgettable Sim families in The Sims 4, in my subjective opinion, of course. Since each save file is unique, it's likely that some of you have had regular interactions with many of the sims that make them memorable to you, but throughout my time with the game I have either barely ran into these sims in my game or they haven't left any sort of impression on me. A small disclaimer, this will only include pre-made sims that live in the world at the start of the save, so no townies. Since they don't have a bio and aren't necessarily intended to be prominent characters, I don't think it's fair to lump them in the same camp as the pre-made sims. I'm gonna start out with a bang cause this first household comes from the base game. Most of the base game families are kind of inherently iconic due to them being present in every single game regardless of what packs the player does or does not have, but there is one specific household that I regularly find myself forgetting about. That would be none other than the Roomies household. I don't know if it's just me, but for whatever reason, these sims never pop up around the world in my game, and when they do, it takes me a second to remember that they are actually pre-made sims, and not randomly generated ones. Okay, maybe that's a bit extreme, Zoe and Jay actually don't find to be too forgettable. Zoe by virtue of being the token girl, and Jay mainly due to him having an unconventional name. But I don't think I've ever seen Mitchell or Gavin walking around the world. I also think another reason they don't stick out to me is because the premise of their household is pretty weak in that they're just a new girl reference. Other than that, they don't really have much else going for them. They also have to share the spotlight with such heavy hitters like the goth, land grab, and pancake households, which just makes them fall a bit to the wayside. Also, their house is ugly. Next, I want to talk about the Free Spirits household from Get Together, composed of roommates Maike Haas and Ulrike Faust. I also never run into these two in my game, and I think they have the same issue as the roomies in that they come in a pack full of very memorable households. We've got Party House, we've got the Bjergsons, we've got the Munch family, the Willowreel family, the Bro household, the Bear sisters, all some of the most memorable sims in the game, and then there's Free Spirit. They just don't stack up in comparison. The Karaoke Legends household from City Living is another one that I think just falls to the wayside when compared to the rest of the sims introduced in the pack they're included in. City Living has a lot of well-designed sims with a lot of personality, and the Karaoke Legends household is no exception to that, and yet I consistently find myself forgetting about them. Again, I think the premise is just not all that strong here when compared to the other households. The Fangs are an ambitious and driven couple ruthlessly climbing the social ladder. Penny Pizzazz is an aspiring influencer. The Beatas have a baby on the way, but no room for it in their small city apartment. And karaoke legends like karaoke. The end. There just isn't enough meat there to chew on. Okay, there is supposedly an unrequited romance plotline going between Miko and Akira. So there's something there, but when we think of unrequited romance in The Sims 4, you always think of the BFF household first and foremost. So again, just not enough there to make them stand out. A household that actually does have kind of an interesting premise and yet I still find to be extremely forgettable is the New Start household from Cottage Living. This household is composed of a single sim, Cecilia King, who I thought was named Celia King up until prepping for this video. Her storyline is that she moved to Hanford on Bagley from the city to start a new life and that would actually be kind of interesting if it weren't for the fact that another pre-made sim from Cottage Living basically has this exact same story except better, that being Simon Scott. Simon is a city boy who also hasn't fully adjusted to the rural lifestyle. Rural. <laughs> Why did I put that word in my script? I can't pronounce that word. Rural. Rural lifestyle. And basically only moved to Hanford on Bagley because his wife wanted to live there. It's the same plot, just with some tension sprinkled into it, which makes him stand out more in my eyes. On top of that, the Scots own and run the local pub, and therefore have a larger presence in Hanford on Bagley. That whole situation and the fact that Cecilia herself doesn't really have any standout characteristics ends up making her fade into the background for me. Similarly to Cecilia, the Robles Ruano household from Growing Together I feel like should be much more memorable to me than they are, but I just always forget they exist, and that's a shame because I actually really like them. The Robles family is the most influential family in San Sequoia, meaning they're pretty prominent characters in Growing Together. This should mean that the Robles Ruano household should be just as memorable due to having direct familial ties to the Robles, and yet they just don't stick to my mind in the same way as the Robles do. Jay is even the first ever canonically non-binary sim. That's icon behavior. And yet, I don't know, I just don't find them memorable. 
It's such a shame for a family that's all about eccentricity and being an unconventional family unit, they still somehow fade into the background for me. I think if Maxis had pushed that eccentricity a bit further, they would have stuck out more and potentially been up at the top with some of the most iconic Sims 4 families. Next up, I want to talk about a few families that have what I like to call main character syndrome. These feature one sim that I find to be pretty memorable, but the rest of the family, I could not even tell you their names without looking them up on the Sims fan wiki. The most obvious example of this I can think of is the Tinker household from Eco Lifestyle. Obviously, Tina Tinker is a pretty memorable sim. She will occasionally show up at your doorstep to help you out if there's something broken in your house. But did you know she has a wife and stepdaughter? I certainly didn't. Yasemin and Olive are two sims that I don't think I've ever seen before in my life, and I couldn't tell you a damn thing about them. Two households in Strangerville also fit this bill to me, the first one being the Eclectic Arts household. Alice is a fairly prominent sim from the pack, mainly due to her being such a beautiful sim, but also because of how prominently she was featured in promotional material for the pack. Like the gals right there on the cover of the pack. But Mark and Leslie, I couldn't tell you a single thing about these two. I know Leslie is one of the infected sims at the beginning of a save, I guess that's something. The other household is the Sigworth household. Jess Sigworth is pretty memorable, she's also somewhat prominent in promotional material, and her wearing a military outfit for her everyday look makes her stick out. But same as with Tina Tinker, I always forget that Jess has a husband and daughter. Dylan and uh, whatever their daughter is named, I just <laughs> I don't remember it. <laughs> they just don't stick out. The last of this category of families I want to highlight is the Nishidake household, coming from Snowy Escape, of course. This is composed of elder couple Shigeru and Sachigo Nishidake and their granddaughter Kaori. To me, Kaori has always read as the main character of this household while Shigeru and Sachiko fade into the background and I think a large part of that is the fact that they're elders. So after starting a new save, they just don't stick around for that long and so you likely don't encounter them that much in comparison to your average pre-made. This is kind of a shared issue with most pre-made sims that are elders. It's harder for them to make an impression since they just end up dying before too long. Some are able to stand out in spite of that, such as Eleanor Sullivan or George Cahill, but most end up falling a bit to the wayside. On top of that, Kaori's design makes her stick out more than most sims, whereas Shikuru and Sachigo don't really have any recognizable physical traits. This list is not ordered in any specific way, but this final household I want to highlight is, in my opinion, by far at the top of the list. I find them so forgettable that I do not even know two of their names and don't care to find out. And the third sims name I can only remember because they're one of the winners in my Sims 4 Survivor brand steals. This household is none other than the Elderberry household from Discover University. This is composed of Rohan Elderberry who is a teen that moved in with his grandparents in Brychester to explore his options before starting university. Again, I could not tell you who the grandparents are. I think the grandpa is named Akram, is that right? As I was writing this script, I couldn't even form an image in my head of how they look like. They're that forgettable to me. I never see any of these three anywhere in my game. The grandparents also have the same problem as Shikuru and Sachigo of being elder sims, so they don't stick around for long per save, and they have completely unremarkable designs. But they don't even have the benefit of being attached to a more memorable sim, as Rohan is just as bland as they are. You would think that with a name like Elderberry, you'd stick out much more, but no. These three have absolutely nothing going for them. So that's my list. Those are what I consider to be the least memorable households in The Sims 4. I hope that with this video, these sims can get some more love, because honestly, all of the premates bring at least something to the table. I just have yet to see what that something is for these specific sims. Let me know what households you think are the least memorable. Perhaps there's one that is so forgettable that I even forgot to include in this video. Also, let me know if you think any of the sims I talked about shouldn't be included on this list. Perhaps Dylan Sigworth was your 100 baby challenge sims' baby daddy or something and you have fond memories with him or something, I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.